Hello, my name is Robert Marquez, and today I'm going to talk about Model View Presenter, the View and Presenter implementation. This is video number eight in a series that I've been working on. In this video, there will be a demonstration of the Model View Presenter demo application that has been discussed over the past few videos. There will also be a high level review of how the view was constructed. We'll go over navigation to various parts of the application that access views and presenters. We'll also review how the graphical assets were managed and how, very importantly, communication between the views and presenters takes place using raised events. We're also going to show the current state of the Visual Studio projects that are in the solution building the application. And we'll talk briefly about Microsoft Unity Container, which is used in this demo application. There's no actual Visual Studio development in this video. If you're looking for that, that will most likely be in the next video after this one. This is what the demo application looks like. And now I'll go ahead and bring it up so we can see how it looks as it runs. So this is the demo application. It's entirely in WinForms. There are no third third party components used in it. Just the native Visual Studio 2017 <coughs> components are used. We have a news button at the top, which displays a news page. This is a PDF file embedded in this view. And we have a plants view, which shows a data grid of plants coming from a SQLite database. And we have a departments uh, option here, which takes us to a departments list. That's a list of departments. The past videos primarily focused on the department's data model. So this is it, where we can select on the side and select an add option to add records. Or we could do an edit, which will load the records from the SQLite database. And then, of course, we can, there is a delete option. There is a help about. A very light amount of user information. So this is basically the demo application. And so now we'll move forward. So this is the way the application has been designed. We have a main form which has an area in the lower half that contains a panel. This panel is used to uh, allow the various views to be displayed. And what the types of views that are being displayed in here are user controls. So there are basically four user controls used in this application for this display area. There's the news presenter, which contains a the content of a PDF file. And we also have a plants list user control, which shows the plants for this fictitious company of uh, plants. And then there's a department list user control, which displays a list of departments. And the department list allows us to click a pop-up menu in one of the columns to allow us to see details on the department. And from there, you saw from the demo that we can add, delete, or update department entries. Now, as I said, there are about four views, or uh, yes, views in this application. So here, the news view contains these items here. We have a news view UC, which stands for user control. So that's the name of the view, and it has an associated presenter called news presenter. Then after clicking the plants button, we have the plants view user control uh, component. So it's plants, this is the view. And the presenter for that is plants presenter. So you'll notice a pattern here where we'll identify as presenter or view. Then upon clicking the departments button on the top or link, you'll see a departments list view and a departments list presenter. These are data grids displaying this information. And when we click in the options column, 
we're presented with options to add, edit, or delete items, which will actually bring up another view for the add and the edit. So this is the view for adding an edit. It's called the department detail presenter for the presenter part, and the view part is called department detail view you see. This is also user control. All of these have been user controls that are displayed in the panel. Now, during this application, there are a number of graphical images you may have seen displayed. We are using a resource file in the project, which you can see up here with this yellow circled item, resources RESX. And when we double click on this, we get this user interface to allow us to add images. So these are primarily PNG files. We do have an ICO file in there as well. And this is beneficial to use the resources in a resource file because during the application, we can refer to the resource file to pull out these images, which we'll see in the later videos covering Visual Studio. Now there were some general rules used in this application for raising events. The communication between the views and the presenters is primarily done with events. And the simple rules we used were, uh, okay, so views, the events primarily captured were when buttons are clicked or menu items are clicked, or perhaps a certain event that we want to do something, such as when a view is loaded. Now, the events raised by the view are primarily handled by the presenter. So basically, presenters handle the events for the views they're associated with. Now here we'll take a look at how these events are being handled. Typically in a view, we declare the event at the top part of the code module. And somewhere later within the code module of a view, when we handle a click such as a button click we see here, we will raise an event. Uh, the name of this event here is department list button click raised event, which matches the event we've raised, we've declared on top. And in another code module, the main presenter, which is associated for that view, the presenter typically will subscribe to these event names. So the event name here, department list button click event raised, is subscribed to here typically in an area like on the load event of a presenter. So we see here I'm accessing the main view variable that the presenter has in this case. I'm referring to a event declared in the main view called department list button click event raised. And I'm saying here that when this event is raised from this module, I want to fire on this method. In other words, I want to run this code method, which is also defined typically in the same source code file, in this case, the main presenter. In the main presenter, I would find another method called on department list button click event raised, which matches this statement here when I subscribed. So when this event happens, this method is run, and whatever is in here will run as well. So I'm running a, another method called set up department list in panel, and there's probably quite a number of other operations that will take place there. The main thing here is that we know when to run this, and the when that takes place is when this event is raised. Take a quick look now at the Visual Studio projects. For this uh, version or release of the demo application, new to it is the access type event args. That's a customized event that is being raised for communication between the uh, presenter in view, and we'll go over that in the next video. We have event helpers, which we'll go over as well. That's a custom class I wrote to help simplify raising events. Nothing new, well, actually there is something new in the infrastructure layer. There is the plant repository was added to this. The area that grew the most, though, is a new section, a new project added called Presentation Layer. And all these items were added to that. You can see here, there's, for example, under Views, 
a user control folders was created just to house to house the user controls and the associated interface files that go with those. Those GUI parts or user interface parts that were not user controls were placed outside of the user control folder and they're listed here. So error message view, help about view, main view, these were not user controls, they're typical WinForms, so they're outside the user controls. And then we have an associated presenters folder that contains presenters that were added to support an associated view. The names are very much the same, it's the last part that's different. So department details presenter, there's a corresponding department details view. Here we go. These have the letters you see to indicate that they were user controls. Although these don't have you see the suffix of you see after them, I placed them in a user control folder so that I would know these particular presenters are exist to support user controls. Those uh, presenters that exist to support WinForms are not in the user control folder. They're out on the outside here. As far as services go, there was a new service added for plants. So there's a plant uh, services area. There was nothing added for uh, testing where, where there's no uh, unit testing done for this part of it. Unity container will be needed for this application. So this is a package that will need to be added in. It's a NuGet package. Unity has been added to the project so that it can manage the instantiation of the many classes you saw listed a while ago. Unity makes it a lot easier to have classes automatically available when we need to use them. So uh, we'll go over that in more detail in the next project, in the next video. And this is the version of Visual Studio that was used for this video. The Visual Studio keeps getting updated, uh, Visual Studio 2017. So we can see here the version we're at now. And that ends the video for, um, for today. Thank you for watching.